should Wolf make a podcast? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. You do, you don't. I think it would be a great and definitely interesting thing to get started on. Yo, we're getting free bedtime stories? Hell yeah. Fuck yeah, you should start a podcast. No, you Hispanic fuck. Yeah, he better get his lazy ass up and start a podcast. You're not a podcaster, Nick. <laughs> it all depends on what you're gonna make. Greetings. This is The Wolf, and welcome to the Words with The Wolf podcast. Online, I'm vaguely known as a live streamer, audio editor, voice actor, friendly bully, and forthright emotional supporter. Today, however, I'm here to lurk in your ears and mind. So, tell me, what exactly do you think about the, uh, the intro? <laughs> We're going to keep things simple here. Um, I made the intro... Actually, the lines were recorded by separate people ages and ages ago, months and months ago, I believe. And I was thinking about it, and I, I didn't really know how to properly start things off. But I figured, hey, you know what? Since I had that idea months ago, I might as well go along with it. You know, I'm, I'm thinking maybe having different people record different lines for different intros each episode might be... It, well, it sounds like a bit of a hassle, but... <laughs> It's definitely an idea. So let me know in the comments what you think about that. There are a couple of things that I want to do, um, well, discuss today for the first episode, because this podcast could go one of so many ways, so, so many ways. Um, so firstly, actually, episode zero, what the fuck was that about? <laughs> um... It was really not exactly a podcast episode. I guess that's why I'm labeling it as episode zero, because it wasn't an official episode. It was more of a, an introduction to me and uh, a bit of an exposure, you know, to show some vulnerability. I feel like I'd be most comfortable with having this show so long as I was able to put myself out there at my, my lowest. You know, it's a tough thing to do is... um to be able to expose yourself, not only physically, but emotionally in general. I suppose it's a good thing to talk about in general is the fact that we should be able to feel comfortable enough in our environments to be able to expose ourselves. Of course, um, it's not something that we're going to want to do 24-7. You're not going to want to go out there into the wild and uh, expose every weakness that you have to the entire world. No, 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 no course not but being able to expose yourself at least a little bit with your family and your friends is definitely something that's important so keep that in mind for me all right it's definitely something people don't do nowadays not often enough at least this whole generation has been very enclosed about itself and for good reason i mean the judgmental you know attitudes that everyone has these days is just absolutely ridiculous I mean, hell, look at, uh, look at my live streams, for example, right? First of all, I never expected to blow up as much as I did on TikTok. And, um, well, I can't say that I blew up entirely, not blew up specifically, but I definitely grew in numbers a lot quicker than I uh, expected to. Granted, not that quick and not that heavily. I didn't explode across the entire internet, but regardless, it was enough to be noticeable. And the amount of hatred and judgment that you get for just existing on a social media platform, especially TikTok nowadays, is absolutely ridiculous. If you go onto my live streams, whenever I'm live at night, well, to put it plainly, you're going to see, sure, of course, a lot of positivity. God bless my viewers. I love them all dearly. I love all of you guys. Thank you for your support. But of course, you got plenty of people coming in and saying, this dude is grown man, by the way, doing this bullshit, or this dude is probably unemployed, or this is sad to watch, or anything of that sort. Hell, I don't even do anything that unusual on my live streams. I sit there and talk to the camera while on VR, well, VR chat specifically. So if that is something that people are hating on, then well, I mean... I can only imagine the rest of the the people that are out there creating content and getting hate for other reasons. 
People always talk about the voice and whatnot, but I can only imagine, just in general, other things that may come across people's minds. Especially people who don't have a deep voice like mine. What do they do? Well, they have content of different sorts that they stream or create and they get hate for what? Literally nothing. Hey, by the way, if you make content on your own time as well, then keep at it. I'm proud of you. It's a good thing to do, you know. There are a lot of content creators out there, and it is difficult to get anywhere nowadays, but while I may be a little bit hypocritical saying this, I will say that your focus really shouldn't be to blow up that far. It should be to have fun and to, well, have some sort of hobby that you enjoy, you know? It's not exactly something that has to be viral or thrown across the internet constantly for it to be something that's valid never has to be the case although that was something that i always strived for myself i always wanted more attention wanted more numbers wanted more of all of that and i'm not gonna lie and sit here and like say oh it was all by accident or anything of that sort i'm not gonna sit here and you know bullshit my way through whatever i'm saying here I 100% want to go viral. I 100% want to be known. That's the point of what I do. I like the exposure. I like the idea of becoming more popular. Of course, there are ups and downs to that. But it shouldn't always be the number one focus, which is something that maybe I should work on as well. I do get a little bit of financial help with uh, what, I, what I do, actually. Which, of course, thank you again to all the supporters who do help with that in that manner. I'm forever grateful for all the gifts that are sent my way whenever I'm live streaming. But I also do this because it is genuinely fun. It is a nice, relaxing hobby for me to retreat to on the side of every night. So if you have something like that for yourself, then please, by all means, continue to do it. That is very healthy for you. It's something that's worth your time. If it helps you relax, if it helps you have fun, strive for what you want to do and do it. As long as you're not hurting anyone, who gives a shit? Yes, there are going to be a lot of people talking down on you, hating on you, literally praying for your downfall. <laughs> but that should not stop you. That shouldn't even slow you down in the slightest. Whatever it is you want to do, if you're not hurting someone, do it. Do it because it makes you happy. Do it because it actually brings life to your soul. Do it because it supports you. Do it because it brings you to smile. That is what is important. That's why I started this podcast to begin with, was to put myself out there, expose myself, make sure I was 100% comfortable with everything that I was doing, and then, start a passion project. It's granted a small passion project, but this is something that does make me happy, and I'm glad to be here, sitting and talking in your ears, and being able to have a conversation with you. Granted, podcasts can be a little silly if you think about it, especially if it's a, a solo podcast. With that being said, I am going to mention that I plan to have co-hosts on the podcast every now and again, for sure. Having guests on a podcast is like, mandatory basically i mean things can get a little bit bland if you don't right don't worry i'm not saying that in an unhealthy manner i know i could do this by myself if i really wanted to i'm just thinking what kind of guests would we like to have on this podcast what would we talk about i'm thinking the words with wolf podcast is going to be something of encouragement and relaxation kind of like my live streams on tiktok by the way, if you haven't seen my streams on TikTok, go ahead and check it out. I love interacting with all the viewers there. It's very fun, very relaxing, very nice to come and chat with you guys all at the same time. There's always a lot going on, and it's great. At Love the Wolf on TikTok is the, the handle that you're going to need. So, if you haven't already, check it out. At L-U-V underscore the wolf, you'll find me there, playing VR chat and chatting along with you lovely viewers, having a good time. I was thinking about, um, well, my YouTube channel and all that, and considering the differences that we have nowadays compared to what YouTube has been a 
couple years ago, actually, not even that long ago, the insane changes that come to YouTube or just social media in general. Let's talk about it, if you don't mind. YouTube, I remember YouTube years ago was something that I always went back to, especially in high school or even middle school. I always got done with schoolwork and got done with everything important, like any few chores or anything of that sort. Granted, I didn't have too many chores as a kid. I was lucky enough. But whenever I was done with all that, if I wasn't playing games or in the mood to play video games or anything like that, then I would automatically immediately open up YouTube. YouTube was a completely different universe. It was always something that you could explore and find something genuine and entertaining with, you know. I always watched, uh, well, Markiplier, I watched a lot of Dan TDM, a lot of all of that stuff, really. And it just, it looked like YouTubers were genuine those days, you know what I mean? It's unfortunately very hard to find things like that these days. I mean, granted, you got people like all the controversial people, such as Mr. Beast or Logan Paul, KSI, right? Some other people like that exist. Um, of course, it's not just them, but there is a lot of controversy around people who are just completely blown away on YouTube's platform and, well, just completely corporate. Granted, I have my own opinions. Nothing I say is perfect or 100% certain or accurate or whatever. There's your disclaimer. You know that now. But, man, YouTube in general has become a complete corporate thing that's just a lot less entertaining. Granted, I did watch a couple of Mr. Beast videos, you know, uh, a little bit, a little while ago. It's just not as fun to watch, you know what I mean? And this is excluding all of the, uh, the hot topics regarding Mr. Beast in general with, uh, with the whole prime lunchly whatever deal and whatever lawsuit he's got going on which if you don't know by the way mr beast is a youtube channel that you can actually look up right now one of the largest youtube channels in the world right about now he's got a lot of uh, charity work a lot of challenges and his whole gig is that he gives away a absolute shit ton of money for certain activities that people do he gives people challenges or things of that sort, and if they complete the challenge, they get an insane amount of money, $20,000, $500,000, incredible amounts of money, you know, very good uh, financial support for the competitors, I'm sure. But nowadays, people are gaining these ideas or even exposing the fact that these videos are heavily faked or competitors half of the time are not even actually competitors or anything of that sort. Let alone the fact that this Mr. Beast guy, his real name is actually Jimmy. He's got, well, a lot of lawsuits against him and his products and everything he does. I'm not very educated with this stuff, so I can't talk too heavily on the topic. But regardless, it's just a shame because it does feel very corporate, fake, and, well, you know, it doesn't feel as authentic as YouTube once was. If that is the top channel in general, then what is YouTube coming to? What is social media coming to at this rate? It's a damn shame, it really is. Granted, I do like his content, and it's good, very good concept, and what he does, at least half of the time, is real charity as well, so props to him for that, of course, but you know what I mean. <laughs> it's just, it's, it's a little much, you know, too much in your face. I just did this, and I'm gonna do this, and I'm gonna give away this amount of money to people. A uh, little too much of a show-off type of gain. It's not the right drive, in my opinion. It's not the right passion that you should be looking forward to. But being that this is only episode one of the podcast here, I'm not going to dig too deep into controversial subjects or anything of that sort. I don't think that's too appropriate. Uh, at least not yet. We're not exactly 100% decided on what the main topics of this podcast are going to be. So for now, it's just me kind of spitting out what comes to mind, what I think is important for you to know, or what I think is important for us to uh, talk about in general. So wherever it is that you're listening uh, to this podcast on, actually, whether it be YouTube or Spotify, you can uh, leave me a comment below and let me know what you think we should talk about around here. I do listen to the comments as much as possible. So I was actually surprised that Spotify has a comment section. It, I didn't even know that existed. <laughs> I, um, I, didn't, I guess I didn't pay much attention to it with the other podcasts that I listen to, such as, uh, well, Distractable 
or um, I used to listen to Brain Lake before that went down. A couple of other podcasts that I listen into every now and again, such as Actually Impulsive, <laughs> which is uh, Logan Paul's podcast as well. I just think they're very entertaining and funny to listen to. These types of things are, well, what else can you say about them? They're funny. <laughs> they're funny in their own way. What are your thoughts on those types of podcasts? Especially with controversial type of content creators that are hosting them, of course. Uh, I looked into Distractable, which is a podcast hosted by three men uh, named Mark, Bob, and Wade. Very, very popular creators, actually. Um, I mean, these types of guys, they're wholesome as all hell. You love them. You can't hate them. You really can't. And it definitely encouraged me to uh, take the podcast idea and roll with it. But of course, they are all co-hosting with each other. So we're going to have to look into some guest stars for the future episodes that are upcoming. I definitely have a couple of ideas, um, but maybe at some point we could have some viewers like you come onto the podcast and talk to me about a few things. You could bring up your ideas and, um, you know, maybe we'll explore them a little bit. Regardless, it is nice to interact with people like you. So if you do want to interact with me and you haven't already, then go ahead and join the Discord server. The links will be uh, down below. I think... I should have, if you scroll down, there should be some links to uh, my personal website, something of that sort, and in there will be links to things like the Discord community server of the collective and my other social medias, stuff like that. Easier to uh, interact with me and get to know me through there. So go ahead and check it out. Definitely in the bio of this podcast, for sure. Well, I think this has gone on long enough, and honestly, uh, the more I've been writing down notes during this podcast episode, the more tired I become. So, why don't you sit back and relax, hang out with me, while I meditate a little bit, find some inner peace, and get some fucking rest, because <laughs> Lord knows I need it. It's late as all hell as of this recording, and now I've basically got nothing better to do. So, take a deep breath with me. In... And out. I think it's time to conclude the first episode. Bit of a jumble of miscellaneous things, but for what it's worth, I had fun. And I hope you've been having fun uh, hanging out with me as well. Hopefully, as time goes on, we'll get into a more focused topic. But for now, this was just words with the wolf. Nothing special, nothing crazy. Just relaxation, chatter about random topics, and uh, just some time to chill out. We're going to keep it short for now. As a little celebration for it being in the first episode, I'm going to catch myself a little bit of a break and hopefully tire you out with this horribly, horribly boring episode. <laughs> That's enough for me for now. Thank you so much for listening. Look forward to more content like this in the future, and hopefully next time we'll have a more organized schedule for our podcast. Bless your hearts, and until next time, my family. <laughs> <laughs>